one Sunday, one of those middle years, a bunch of us from Evergreen Junior High, you know, we were pretty proud of the fact that our little basketball team was quite competitive playing other groups, not just when we played against the high school. And it was good for us to have the fun and the fellowship, and we all loved to play basketball. Well, we'd gone to Sunday school and church that morning, and uh, gone home, made a bite, and yeah, it was snowing, and we came back out of church, and we went over some hills, no problem. But by the time we ate, it had been kicking it down. And I decided to go down the uh, canyon and not go over to 70 and go down on the Highway 70 to Broomfield. That's who we were playing. There's a bunch of guys from Broomfield. And that's a suburb north of Denver and pretty much adjacent to... Uh, where this, our close friends have known Donna since the day she was born. The Schuylers live, and so she wanted to go down and drop off there and visit while I went over and played basketball. The older kids decided they had other things to do, but we had the baby Rhonda with us. Well, boy, it was slick, and I was dumbfounded because Colorado, man, I mean, they are organized. When it snows, <laughs> it's hard to get the first ten flakes deep. Not deep, ten flakes on the road before. They're out there putting a little sand on and brushing and scraping and clearing those roads. Always, always, always. But I guess because it was Sunday, because it was late in the year, because maybe it wasn't expected, maybe it wasn't doing anything down in Denver. Anyway, that road had nothing but its normal self and about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch maybe of snow on it. But that's enough particularly when the road's been wet enough that underneath it's icy. So I was going very, very slow. And somewhere down in there between Kittredge and Idledale, there's a curve that I knew was a mean curve. And I, I'm telling you, I don't think I was going 10 miles an hour. But when I started around that curve, that car started moving right on down. And forget the curve. It's heading right on down and going to go over that cliff. And it's, I don't know, 40 or 50 foot drop there. I knew it would kill us. You know, before the days of seat belts, uh, child restraints and all that, uh, child seats. I said, Donna, hold that baby. I, I just I had that horrible feeling. Don't let my child be terrified before she dies. So Donna was holding the baby. There was a rock there, big enough that I thought that my bumper would catch it, and if I could get the car to hit it, might kick us back over, away from the edge. And so that's what I'm concentrating on. And so help me God, I had no idea I was going to break a fundamental rule, which in breaking it, I probably saved our lives. My foot had gone on that brake. And so I'm jockeying to hit that rock that's right over there against the edge of the cliff, but it's also, uh, there was, I suppose, a three, four foot, uh, maybe even five foot uh, shoulder over there with gravel on it. Gravel and dirt. Never hit the rock. Once we got off of the blacktop, that car stopped still. Oh, man. But he couldn't turn around, so we went on down. Dropped her off, and I went over and. I was the only person from Evergreen that got to the Broomfield gym. And we played a little five-on-five. Five. Wasn't much fun. Just my heart was still in my throat. And uh, wondering what happened to Mr. Rose and his car load and found out later that, yeah, they went over and started down on Highway 70 and got into eight or ten car pileup. I can't remember if they were da the car was damaged or not. But when they got untangled from that, they turned around and went back. They were smarter than I was. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, shoulda never been out on that road. Thank you, God, for sparing us. Love basketball, but that was a foolish, foolish decision to head down that canyon.